what's going on YouTube Chris here again with another video if you guys are continuing from last video of the install of the coilovers well most likely you are here to see how to do the adjustment and so like the last video it's gonna be a learning curve for everybody but to catch you guys up if you didn't watch the last video right now I have new coilovers that I just installed Rev 9 and uh, the car's still a monster truck because I pretty much replicated what the stock struts were about height wise and it came out a little bit higher than I really like so we're gonna go ahead and adjust that but I've already done all the measurements of the wheel gap and I have already calculated everything so I'm gonna be dropping the front about three inches so both sides gonna be three inches dropped and there you go so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I'm gonna do that but we're gonna go ahead and break these lug nuts loose real quick get the car jacked up remove that tire All right, so here are all the components. Here is the coilover itself, the Rev9 coilover, and all the attaching components. So you got your sway bar end links. You got this that holds up the bracket together. And these two bolts right here that you're gonna have to remove to go ahead and twist and adjust that. So first things first is we're gonna have to break this loose, the bottom one. You do not wanna mess with these two top ones. And something to know about these Rev9, they come with two wrenches right here. The smaller one is to loosen, the right one is to tighten, so keep that in mind. And they just line up in these little notches as like so, and then you can you can loosen them up. So I said I wanted to drop it by three inches. I'm gonna be going up quite a bit. <laughs> so I'm gonna go from the bottom of this locking feature to about right here. Okay, so I said we're gonna raise it by three inches. So I'm just gonna come down here from the bottom, measure up to three inches. So we're going to go ahead and keep moving that up a little bit. Alright, so that's about 3 inches right there. So once you have that moved to where you need to be, we actually have to rotate this bottom base. So we're going to have to remove those bolts and then twist it up to that position. And real quick, the tooling you're going to need for this, this is going to be a 14 millimeter for the end link, a 12 millimeter for this little bracket, and then a 19 for each of these bolts. Now that everything is released, like I said, you can go ahead and spin this. You're going to go ahead and spin this all the way until it reaches to the point you want it to go. It obviously is the next morning. So it got dark and had family come over and I really didn't have time to go ahead and vlog what I was doing. But here is the front side all done. So I'm not gonna go any lower. We'll see how that rides first. But I saved the other side for you guys so I can go ahead and show you how I adjusted everything. Once again, look at that gap. Get a whole fist in there. And on this side, you can get about two fingers. So that's, that's plenty enough for me. I can always go back and lower it some more if I wanted to. So I'm not gonna lie, I had some issues last night trying to figure out how to actually adjust everything. Because on the coilovers themselves, it says not to mess with this. There's a little label on there. And then I've also read on forums that mess with that, you can mess with the spring rate. So I thought the only way to adjust these were to remove all the bolting hardware and then rotate this, unlock that, and rotate this up. However, when I was doing that, basically what happens is this end link little bracket right here it ends up moving above the end link and I can't get that in. So I was kind of at a standstill, didn't know what to do. I was like, maybe I got the wrong coilovers, and I don't know, it was weird. Long story short, I went on a forum, a Facebook page group called Lancer Nation, and uh, I got some help from them. So basically what I got to do is I got to twist this top one to the left, and this all comes down. So as long as these two are together, I think your spring rate will be okay. So what we're going to do is unlock this. And then we're going to spin the top one to the left. Do not touch this bottom one. And what it does is it brings it down into this instead of this up. That way everything stays intact. So don't even have to loosen anything bolt wise. You're just going to loosen that and loosen the top one. So you're also going to want to make sure you have a ruler. So you're going to go ahead and measure these threads. That's what I do. I go from the bottom of the top. I go from the bottom of here to the top of here. And on the other side, I went as low as an inch inch gap, so we're going to go ahead and try to reflect that on this side. So currently, right now, we're about at like 4.7. Just because I know we're going to be going up a ways, I'm just going to 
Go ahead and bring it all the way up. So when you do this, you're gonna notice that everything moves. And that's okay. It's just all the threads feeding down into this boot. Definitely getting there. If you got a pair of gloves, you can always use two hands and rotate it if you don't want to use the wrench. It can be a little faster. All right, looks like an inch to me. So now we're just gonna go ahead and lock this one in place. Cinch it down. All right. What do you guys think? Tucking pretty nice right there. So wow, I can't even get two fingers on this side. It's about one finger. <laughs> and well, duh. Same on this side, no two fingers now, it's just the one finger. I just realized it's because I jacked up one side and then did the other. So it's kind of sitting higher, which makes total sense. But uh, a little lower than I would want it. But we'll go ahead and see how it rides. Because if I can clear this little dip that I have in my driveway, I'll just go ahead and keep it. This is what I mainly scrape on. But man, this thing looks super low from, from afar. I love it. Look at that. <clears throat> Look at that. And I don't remember if I'd mentioned this in the coilover install video. However, there's the softening, hardening, dampening. There's like 32 settings. So what I did was I brought it all the way to soft, maxed it out. And then I counted 20 clicks over to hard. And I did that for the other side as well. We'll go ahead and test out the ride once everything is installed. But just in case I forgot to mention that, I wanted to tell you. But time to go ahead and work on the rear. Let's see. It's about three fingers. And about three fingers on this side as well. Floating, floating, we are good. Now that we have both wheels off, everything's on jack stands, we're good there. We're good to go ahead and adjust our coilovers. It's just gonna be the same process as the front ones. So we're gonna go ahead and bring the top one to the left and this bottom one we're just gonna unlock. And then we'll get our measurements of this gap right here. That's about 1.3 gap. We're gonna go ahead and raise it to about half an inch gap. Okay, driver's side is done. Again, that is at half an inch. So let's go ahead, throw these wheels back on, lower the car, and see our results. From three fingers to two. We're going to go ahead and tighten everything down, take it for a drive, and see how it works, see how it feels. I might actually bring this up a little bit more. Okay, verified everything is tight, everything looks normal. Um, let's go ahead and drive. Okay, now that I have the car pulled out, here's the area of concern. Pretty darn close. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if we can push that limit. The swaying has 
has subsided a lot, so maybe I just had to drive it around a little bit and see what happens. But yeah, the roll in the car got a lot better. So, so far, so good. Damn, that sucked. It was $42 to fill up. Gas is currently at $3.59 here in Florida. Only gonna go higher, I think. Okay, on the way back home and at the gas station, I actually changed the dampening. I made it all the way to the hardest setting and everything feels about normal. It feels like I'm back on my stock struts with a little more control and no roll. But as far as like it's shifting or bouncing or whatever, that's all gone now. So it's nice and smooth. heard Nick on anything lately or bounce around so that's good so I think the hardest setting is still comfortable it's nothing too crazy but we're gonna go ahead and try to run over this little manhole again and see if we hear anything replicated hmm. yeah I definitely hear something smacking as you can tell it takes these corners pretty good now. Happy with that. Just for shits and giggles, I got the car propped up on this little dip in our our uh, driveway. And holy shit, you would probably think I'm on bags the way this is looking. I can't even get my fingers in there. Pretty crazy. Okay, the car survived its little trip around the block. Here's what it's sitting like. What do you guys think? It's tucked in there pretty good. It sits pretty low. Lowest car I've ever had. Here's from the front. I'm definitely gonna think about raising up the front about a quarter inch. Just so I don't have to worry about scraping on every little thing. But overall, I'm pretty happy so far. The back seems to be kind of perfect. I'm gonna leave the back as is. It's gonna settle down a little bit lower over time anyways. But the front, yeah, we'll go ahead and raise the front just a little bit. I'll do that in another video or Probably won't even film that for you guys. You guys know the, the process. Yeah, but there's the front. All right, well, that's going to be a wrap for today's video. Hope you guys liked it, enjoyed it, learned something, learned from my mistakes. <laughs> I'm, not I'm not ashamed to go ahead and show you guys my failures, if it helps you out. But everything looks fantastic on there. The ride height looks pretty good. I am going to have to go ahead and adjust the front. I'm going to go ahead and raise it about a quarter to half an inch to see how well it rides. And then I'll be sending it off to go get its adjustment and its alignment. So, other than that, I just want to say thanks for watching. Never live your life on idle. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.